Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped, and welcome to my COVID-19 daily vlog, uploading a new video every evening at 6 p.m. to keep you sane during lockdown. Well, it's time for another Peddler's Rides, and it's time for more minis, but this time, mini Clubmans. Now, ideally, I would have had the Clubman in the background backdrop for this video, but Mrs. Petrolpeds taken it to work as she's done pretty much every day for the last two weeks, so you're gonna have to make do with Ruby Roadster here. Now then, before we get going, let's have a couple of peddlers pups, shall we? So first off, sent in by Peter Watts, we have Brian and Kevin, who are sat in the back of an R53, again, mini-themed, Peddler's Pups in this episode. And then second we have Howard Banks. Now I was waiting for one of these. This is Sir Barkley, who is one of the little mini bulldogs that you can buy. I knew I would probably get one of those sent in. But yeah, if you want to send me your Peddler's Pups, then I will put my email in the description below. Now then, let's get cracking with the video. Um, so I've had lots and lots of mini sent to me, but I've also had quite a few Clubmans. And I really like the two videos we're going to share in this episode. First off, we're going to Australia to a guy called Jeremy Cock, who recently bought a JCW Clubman. May, I might have had something to do with that too. So he watched my reviews and thought it would be a good idea to buy one. But I really like this because he shares with us some of the things that maybe aren't perfect about the car. Well, hi Petrol Ped and uh, thanks so much for having me on board. I think this is a great idea. And uh, g'day from down under in Australia. So this is my new baby, a 2019-2020 Clubman JCW. Uh, part of the inspiration for buying this car was due to Petrol Ped's reviews, I must say. Uh, they were definitely taken heavily into consideration uh, with the purchase of this car and then the sheer magic of it uh, in itself tipped me over the edge. Uh, now I was a previous Mini owner. I had a Mini R56 JCW hatch, which was absolutely brilliant. But unfortunately, uh, it dropped cylinder number three. And that meant that it was either an $11,000 uh, engine rebuild or a $7,500 engine replacement with a second hand engine. Uh, and it was just all a bit too much, honestly, for a daily car. I need reliability and I need to know that I can get to my meetings reliably. Uh, and I just honestly didn't want the headache um, of having to work on the car. I did all the maintenance myself on it, but this was just a bit too much. So I finally took the plunge and I bought a new car. This is my first new car ever in my life, which I'm pretty proud of. It's under finance, but that's okay. Uh, so I thought I would actually focus on a couple little things that are not really gripes, but I just wish they made them a little bit different. Uh, overall, the car is fantastic and I could not be happier with it. Uh, but let's go inside. I'll take you on a quick tour and we'll talk about the things that I don't really like. Uh, or let's say they could be improved and hopefully, hopefully Mini might improve them over time. Now I must say... I'm a lighting designer by trade, and having a gobo, which is what this pattern on the ground is called in the lighting world for your car, is just the piece de resistance, and I could not be happier with that. Now, if we step inside, uh, the interior of these is just a work of art, I must say, uh, particularly compared to the uh, R56s. Now, I've just had my baby cleaned. One of the things that was really important to me that I absolutely loved in the F56 uh, hatches was the uh, Union Jack that was on this part of the dash that illuminated. I thought that was just a magic touch and it's something where I feel that cars should be going as far as creating an ambience. And so I picked this car to have the piano black illuminated interior. And so you get... Uh, now, the piano black illuminated interior is different, or it's an add-on past the ambient lighting. So the tubs down here and the handles, etc., they all light up like normal, and also up here. 
that's part of the mini, I think, excitement pack. It's it's the general illumination. But the piano black illuminated interior is this here that you see uh, lighting up. And we'll have a look on the driver's side. Um, it's kind of got like this matrix effect. It's just, I think it's stunning. Uh, and that changes color as well. But when I was comparing this car to the uh, M135i, because that was the other serious choice for me, it was all about... I'm not sure how this is going to look right now. Uh, it was all about the illumination for me, or as a major consideration, rather, should I say. It's not the only thing to consider in the car. Uh, but in the M135i, so much more of the car lights up. So uh, there's a section of dash along here that lights up. Uh, there's some bits in the rear that light up. So in the rear, none of the piano black lights up at all. It's just the door handles, which is okay. But I really feel like Mini could have just gone a little bit better, especially for how much it costs. So then we'll just start her up. Here we go. I uh, love that little crackle and pop. Uh, so now while I'm in drive, everything is wonderful. I think the, the navigation on here is great. Um, I don't really have any complaints there. There could be improvements, um, and I'm sending those to Mini uh, to hopefully get some response. But my complaint, if there was anything about the uh, whole infotainment, would be the lack of Android Auto. But I think because this is running iDrive 6 and not iDrive 7, uh, we won't see Android Auto in these minis. Um, it w won't probably be until the fourth generation mini that we get iDrive 7 and then have the opportunity uh, to actually get Android Auto. But uh, what my gripe relates to actually is just simply Spotify and all the mini apps. Uh, you'll have to excuse me because I'm still learning this. Uh, so right now, because we're stopped, I can use Mini Connected uh, and Spotify from the car here and I can go in and I can uh, navigate my um, uh, collection which is fantastic uh, I can go to my library and I can see everything that I want to um, uh, to go and play and that's exactly what I would expect from uh, Spotify uh, but what is a problem is if I go out of uh, park and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in park. I took the handbrake off, and straight away I instantly lose control of all the smartphone apps. And I think that's really annoying, particularly as far as Spotify is concerned, because I don't see what the difference is with changing channels uh, on the radio versus changing tracks on the Spotify um, or whatever other media I might have been navigating, which I actually have full control of. So I can listen to Spotify. But you'll see it's greyed out, and I can't actually control it. Um, yet, I can go back to Bluetooth, um, and I can search my music via Bluetooth, uh, and I can see what's going on there. Which, again, is okay, but it's not really ideal, because I, I can't actually use my uh, Spotify account at, at this point from a navigation point. So, that's something that I really think they need to address uh, in my opinion. Otherwise, the car's fantastic. Um, the head-up display is definitely one of the highlights, uh, and that was definitely another reason why I wouldn't have gone the GP3, because uh, that was a choice for myself. Uh, that being said, in Australia, they did all sell out. Uh, otherwise, everything in this car is just fantastic. Uh, and thank you, Petrol Ped, for helping me make this decision. Uh, looking forward to more videos from you. Ciao. Now, I really, really enjoyed that. I like hearing other people's views on the car that you have. There were a couple of things. I mean, I don't have that lighting pack in my car and I'm rubbish at using the MMI. So I hadn't actually, and I don't use Spotify either, so I hadn't realized the problem that you were talking about with the kind of uh, apps and so on. I just found that very, very interesting. I would love to know how many of you really use all the functionality in your kind of uh, head up MMI display unit because I'm rubbish. I, I should RTFM, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, brilliant um, car, lovely review, very well put together, and it's great to see something from Stryer as well. Now then, next off, we're off to a really fun video put together by father and son, Henry the Bear 
and Simon the Bear of their two cars, Lucifer von Clubman and Marvin the Mini. Now, Lucifer von Clubman is a JCW Clubman and Marvin the Mini is a JCW Countryman. Now, I have lost count how many people have asked me, am I going to get a Countryman JCW and how different are they to the JCW now? Here we go, head to head, a father and son review. Over to you, Bears. Hi guys, yes. it's Simon the Bear, this is Henry the Bear. We're going to introduce you to a coronavirus hot batch or family business. We're not quite decided yet. You perhaps make your own mind up. So, introduce you to cars. This is Lucifer Von Clubman and Marvin the Mini. I'm just going to open them up and go through a bit of compare and contrast for you. Things that we like, things we're not so keen on. So we've got the cars open. One of the things we're not sure we agree on is the bonnet scoop on the Clubman. Now, what do you think? I, I like it because it's stylish. Excellent. And what colour is this car? I, I find it rather dark purple. Dark purple. It's, it's, is it blue or black? More black. More black. It's enigmatic, black, right? And it's a rather expensive optional extra. And one of the annoying things, in my view, is that to get the contrasting roof, you don't get a discount, you have to pay more money yet again for it. Even more so if you go for the uh, panoramic roof option, which we have on the country. So Henry, specifically for petrol pad, we're going to just, just have a look inside the two engine bays at the wash of screen wash filler areas, okay? Where is it in here? Excellent. Is, is that easy to get to? Yes, it is. You can fill that up quite easily? Yeah. Excellent. All right. Now, now just, just do a little demonstration of, of what we would do with the screen wash in the other car. Okay. So, come over here, you would open this and then really awkwardly try and erase it. It's already stuck to the screen. I think that probably says it off. Thank you. So let's close that up. It, it, it is a rather odd place to put it. Let's put it that way. You, you could you could decant the screen wash into a smaller bottle. Now something common between the two cars is there's quite a lot of splatter that comes up into the engine bay. I mean it's fairly easy to clean out. It's just a it's one of those things that you, you love the car for it, but you think it could have been slightly better. Um, so I've cleaned this out fairly recently. If we look over in the Countryman, you'll see um, less so on this side. I think more so on this side. You can see what that is. And, and a, a bit of a healthy dirt trap up here. I'm sure you'll agree. Now, one of the places that uh, Petrol Pet has already identified as one of the common areas for this is this area around the back of the doors. Now this one hasn't been washed in a week. You see it's getting gunked up. It's, it's easy enough to clean. It's just seemingly a bit of that unnecessary design. This one was clean just recently. So it's easy to do. So we're just gonna have a quick compare and contrast of backs of these cars. Now, one of the things on here we don't like is that the camera is off center. The boot's pretty good space on the Countryman. Nice big space under there that is filled with batteries or electric motors in the uh, electric hybrid version. I think it's going to have a little segment on the, the back barn doors of the club, which we like um, in many, many ways. You like the split? Yes. Oh no. Does it work? Yes. Okay, so we've got the little automatic opening, which is great apart from when you park too close to something and your doors smack into them. So that's the boot. That's the boot. There's a little. Does that pick up? You can get a bit of an idea of a little bit more space than the other one. But it's good enough for us, isn't it? We love the styling of both cars. The, uh, the, given how similar these cars are underneath, they're incredibly different to drive. The Countryman possibly feels a more solid drive on the road. The seating position front and rear is excellent. I think the rear bench is a little bit like the Land Rover Discovery in that it sits slightly higher, so you get a good view from the back. There's plenty of room in the back of the Clubman. Get four adults in there, no problem. Something common to both cars is this little flap in the left tailpipe, which opens up when you pop it in sport mode, which is good fun. Though I think I'd have it in that mode all the time. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be an option. So this is me in the back of the Countryman. Now, I could sit in the other car. We thought that it's a bit lighter in here. Yeah. 
both, common to both cars, the upgraded sat nav. Now, common to that, we both don't like the fact that the inbuilt sat nav doesn't tell you the speed limit of the road you're driving on. Waze does, Apple CarPlay is brilliant, but you can't have the map as the full screen. Which we don't like. <laughs> you can say. So, it, you wanted to talk about this, Henry? Yes. Common to both cars, this, which is the wireless charging port, doesn't actually fit one of the larger phones in them. So doesn't fit any of the phones we have, does it, apart from yours? Which isn't very helpful because you're rarely needing to charge your phone in the car. Um, love the back of this car. Love the Alcantara. And if you could just move forward slightly. There's Alcantara strip on the passenger door there that we like very much. It's just got a, a slightly nicer feel uh, to the interior of this car than the public. But we love both. In both cars, the seat belt doesn't adjust. Now in this car, it's slightly higher than it needs to be, and in the Clubman, it's slightly lower than it needs to be. For me, at least. I love that. I could see you had fun making that one. Now, I have to admit, the um, washer fluid filler cap on the Clubman is in a rubbish place. It always goes everywhere, but that's often the case with quite a few cars, to be honest. Um, but yeah, really great video. Um, I am... I should have had a JCW Countryman um, just before lockdown. So um, I will be getting one. As soon as press cars are available again, I desperately, desperately want to get a JCW Countryman and put it up against my Clubman. The amazing thing for me is Countrymans represent 25% of all Mini sales. Now I know you can't really associate the word Mini with a Countryman because they are huge but I still think it's a very interesting car. So that will be coming to the channel very, very soon. But I thought I would share the Bears' views of their, what a great garage that would be. I'm a Countryman and a Clubman JCW on your get. Oh, very, very cool, very impressive. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed those two. Um, if you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. Thank you to all of you who have sent in videos for Peddler's Rides. I am getting through them. I had a couple of people reach out to me this week saying I hadn't responded when I downloaded or they sent me a photograph and hadn't had a response. I was literally just overwhelmed with videos and with photographs and it just takes so long to download them and catalog them. I just had to cut some time out somewhere uh, and that was uh, basically responding back with emails. So apologies for that. If it's annoyed anybody, that wasn't my intention. I will get through them all. We've got plenty more lockdown to go. That is 20 Peddler's Rides videos I've made now. And I couldn't have done it without all you amazing peddlers sending me videos. So I am still accepting videos and pictures of your pups. Um, but I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Stay safe.